Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make um, some uh, quick, simple quarter wave, uh, radio, quarter wave antennas with radials for 1090 megahertz or ADS-B airplane tracking. Um, you know, I've mentioned it in some of my other videos where I use my simple RTL-SDR combination to track airplanes and you know, listen to MERS, GMRS, lots of other utilities, uh, weather, etc. Anyway, I'm going to show you some simple ways to make uh, a SOT1 by soldering to a SO239 connector. Uh, this one's going to use some 12-gauge uh, wire. And the other one, it's a lot lighter weight, um, use some thicker wire for the top, uh, 12, uh, 12 or 14 gauge up here, and I'm using some uh, 20 gauge wire here, and uh, very little soldering at this one, the rest of it is just uh, screwed onto the threaded F connector. Um, so this is uh, convenient if you like to use F, F connectors for your uh, coax, and this one for your standard uh, SO239 connector. And, uh, uh, that'll get the job done. Great for experimenting with some ADSB. Uh, if you're just starting out, these are by no means the uh, best antennas in the world, but they'll get the job done in the beginning. And uh, you always get more proficient the more of these you build. So uh, hopefully you'll learn something uh, from my experimentations making these two quarter wave uh, 1090 megahertz ADSB antennas. First of these quarter wave ADSB antennas I'm going to build is using the SO239 connector. Um, it's one that probably a lot of the, everybody has around their junk box. This is an old one I have, it's kind of beat up, doesn't matter too much. But it'll allow you to connect up standard uh, coax connectors to it. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you want to get your elements all prepped first. Um, they need to be, uh, once they're final trimmed, uh, 68 millimeters long for the 1090 megahertz uh, ADS-B signal. So what you want to do is give them a little bit extra length. I'm going to cut these about between uh, 80 and 100 millimeters long. Uh, like that. Oops, I actually got to get it on the blade. Um, between 80 and 100 millimeters long. So uh, there'll be a little extra length. Hmm. Anyway, you want to cut them between 80 and 100 millimeters long just so you have a little bit of extra length uh, to trim it later on and then uh, you can solder it up. Make sure you do the same with your main element uh, because it will set up some, some distance into the connector here uh, once the solder is softened and then the wire goes in there and, and hardens up. So <clears throat> I'm gonna start soldering this now. And what I'm gonna do is since I don't have a soldering stand, I just use this uh, channel locks, vice grips, whatever you wanna call them. Makes a great little soldering stand to stabilize the, the uh, whatever you're soldering. And get my bigger soldering iron because this is a little bit heavier, uh, heavier metal here. Get a little bit on there. Oh, this is old. And start getting this hot here. There we go. Make sure that's in there well. Need a little more solder there. All right. Flows. There we go. You want to start with it relatively straight. Because if you don't, it'll it'll get a little wonky when you have to bend it. But you know you can straighten out the actual wire later. I'll make sure it's all cleaned up here. Let's get a little of this excess out. Uh, make it nicer look and pretty. Blah blah blah. All right. So then I'm going to start soldering uh, the little ground radials on there. <clears throat> I probably should have practiced this a little more before I actually tried filming it. But to facilitate soldering on these loops, uh, you might want to give these a little bit of a bend like that, small bend, then you can hook it through uh, like this, then you just pinch it down, makes it stiff in there, makes it a lot easier to solder, especially if you don't have uh, clamps, and uh, proceed around and do the same with the other, the other uh, grounding plane wires, <coughs> loop them through, do a quick little squeeze on there. It gets it kind of set up. And uh, 
that then you can be ready to solder a little bit more easily and maybe my irons my soldering irons kind of hold and beat up too helps to clean the surface of the uh, connector as well there's some crud on one of them and it uh, wasn't quite flowing the solder wasn't quite flowing properly so all four of these are on a little bit snug one's already soldered on as you can see there Let's snug this one down just a hair more and uh, then I will proceed to solder now all these are semi-secure here in the channel locks and uh, let's see if I can solder this a little bit better than, than last time so you can keep them kind of straight you know it's not not too hard you can always move them a little bit after you get some of that solder flowing uh, but you want to get a little bit of solder on them make sure the wire is hot all right enough messing around with the uh, underpowered irons can't, can't get the uh, metal of the of the uh, connector hot enough my stupid little irons hey look at that it's flowing a little bit better once everything's all nice and hot this is solder poor soldering technique uh, 101 actually flowing on the thing finally I think Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Never had this much problem soldering before, but I am today. Well, that has got to be one of the crappiest soldering jobs I've ever seen. I don't think I've soldered that bad since I was 12. Now, never said I was any good, but holy cow. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> they're on here. They're soldered. They're soldered here pretty well. Uh, the only thing next to do is to measure the exact length from the corners, 68 millimeters, trim them to length, and then uh, bend them on down at about a 45 degree angle from that point. Um, that part is simple. I think I can bend something. <laughs> I think I can handle that. Anyway, uh, that's what I got to do next. So next, I'm just going to bend the radials um, at down at about a 45 degree angle. Quick and dirty way to do that is to make a piece of paper that's perfectly square and fold it diagonally across two of the corners kind of like you make those footballs when you're a kid and you got a 45 degree angle and a uh, quick way to use that just kind of line it up with the uh, radio and just bend it down line it up so it's pretty pretty much parallel um, 45 degree angle is going to give you roughly a 50 ohm impedance the farther down you bend it uh, the closer it'll get to 70 until you have a dipole basically so uh, if you bend them all straight down, you'll have a dipole. Um, if you keep them flat, I think it's something like 30 ohms. Anyway, so you just continue on around, bend the next one down, and uh, pretty quick and easy to do once you have it all set up. And then you can just tweak them a little bit from here or there, and you'll be done. Not pretty, but it'll work. You straighten them out so they're all. And then, uh, then we'll trim the length down. Um, so uh, the radials can be, it's okay if they're a little bit longer than 68 millimeters. Um, it's the length of the antenna you want, it's the key, key length uh, that you want to be 68 millimeters. So uh, you'll measure that from where it comes out of the connector. And you measure out 68 millimeters and you'll cut it right there. So I got an extra bit three here, so 68 minus three. 65. So I'll trim this right about here. My handy dandy wire cutter. And then this one here. 60. Wrong side of the ruler. Uh, that's coming in right at 68 millimeters. Okay, so there. And then you just do the same thing with all the radials. Alright, pretty simple, pretty easy. And you'll be done in a few seconds. So the next quarter wave EDSB antenna that I'm going to build is actually going to use a, a little F connector. Um, a lot of people are using the 75 year own co 75 own coax and uh, or they use uh, F connectors for their, for their setup. And I'm going to get um, three pieces of 
I'm using a 20 gauge wire. You can use this wire too. It's thicker. It's, it's a lot harder to wrap around uh, this and use it as radials, but this will make a lot lighter weight antenna. So I'm going to take three of these that are about 180 millimeters long, and uh, I'm going to have six radials. And what I'm going to do is take each one of these and bend it around here, and then secure it with uh, uh, one of the uh, F connector lug nuts. So what you do is you start by taking one of these. Uh, 180 millimeter ones and bending it roughly in half and from there it's pretty simple uh, just to continue to bend them around because this is very flexible and uh, get it all the way around and if you want you can also do a little twist in it like that and go crazy it's very flexible and then uh, just uh, keep it right there move on to the next one and make sure you want to get it close to being half uh, halfway bent because then you'll have enough for uh, the full 68 millimeter uh, radial and then you can just pull this one off after you're done making it and you make the next one at least that's how I've been doing it once you get all three of these radial sections uh, made just uh, you can put them all on step roughly separate them evenly around the outside of the F connector it's not too critical because they're so small and they're easily bent, but you still want to, it's still best to spread them around evenly. Then it'll be a little more even when you uh, go to tighten it down. And then uh, once you have them on there, just tighten this down carefully. Try not to, uh, too much, maybe with the wrench. That's going to bend them, push them a little bit, but you can always bend them back. There. You can slide them still a little bit. And yeah, once it's snug enough that you know they're not going to move around too much, uh, you're good to go. And then you can work on the uh, center section uh, for the actual antenna. Then all you need to do is solder on the center section and you'll be ready to go. And this generally is a little bit easier than with the uh, SO239 because the metal's not as thick. I'm going to get that started there. Just a little more blob of solder on there. Clean it up a little bit, but that's pretty good. All right, All right. so today I showed you how to make two uh, different uh, quarter wave uh, antennas for 1090 megahertz for ADSB airplane tracking. Uh, this one here I showed you how not to solder, or at least to show you how not to solder like me, because that was pretty bad. Uh, but anyway, we got done. It's fairly sturdy. Be fine to go up on an antenna, stand out there in the weather. Uh, this one here, uh, a lot lighter weight, uh, has a little thicker element up here. This is using the F connector. The radials are 20 gauge wire, so it's a lot uh, less sturdy. If you do want to put it outside, uh, expect these to get bent. Uh, or you could put it inside some kind of a plastic radome to protect it a little bit from the elements. But either way, they're good to uh, two good little antennas to start experimenting using your RTL SDR or other ADSB receiver and experimenting with uh, airplane tracking using ADSB. Hope you uh, find it interesting or learn something. At least uh, I learned how not to solder one of these today. And I hope you learned something too. Thanks for watching.